Why hello there beautiful people and welcome to OTT. In this video I'm going to be talking about how meddling of the formula of our much loved franchises over the past decade or so has resulted in a lot of gamers falling out of love with those franchises. I will be touching upon Need for Speed, Grand Theft Auto and a little bit on Gran Turismo. Now these franchises are much loved and going for a very long time and this is going to be a video mainly exploring is it just the gamers that have changed or is it actually the game makers themselves who have meddled so much with the formula over the years and just completely gone for a new target audience altogether now for me uh, also I must stress this uh, another possibility is the fact that me as a gamer myself and other gamers as well have actually changed over the years of they've grown and matured so it could be either, but we'll be discussing that at length in this video. This is sort of a follow-up to one of our most popular videos, which was, which is the best Need for Speed game. Now, in that video, I did already uh, come to the conclusion that the original Underground series was the absolute best and the highlight of the uh, franchise. I did try and originally back in the days we all know Need for Speed started with one idea stuck with it and tried to perfect it and that was the best part and then after that when like it got to the era of Pro Street and other such titles where they started to experiment a bit more try and uh, try different concepts see what works some of them were hits some of them were misses as you would expect but over the last couple of games including the latest version of Need for Speed the 2015 reboot which tried to reinvigorate the original love of the Underground series which obviously completely failed and landed on its face and completely annoyed everyone who played it apart from the new target audience which I'll get into in a moment. So for me as a gamer when I fell in love with Need for Speed uh, back in the day like I said already they tried to perfect it, they worked hard. Even on the original Need for Speed on the ground you could use a steering wheel and there were manual gears and of course this goes without saying in the newest reboot 2015 version there is no uh, wheel compatibility uh, currently as I speak and there is no manual gears and the entire recent games um, I'm pretty sure it's from most the new most wanted onwards because of course they like to reuse the same old names not only to confuse you but to keep making you think that oh it's as good as the one you liked so here it is again when it's not and that is pretty much the story of the new 2015 reboot in a nutshell along with uh, Rivals and such because Rivals was pretty much the new formula. The new formula is make it look pretty uh, Give people the cars that they want, but the depth of the actual driving isn't there the rubber banding AI is just getting worse with each game as it seems I don't know how they can get worse because Rivals was abysmal. Oh, I Still have nightmares of doing those races. It wasn't fun Need for Speed used to be fun. There was a genuine feeling of a game just trying its best. Now it's just a feeling of a game trying to get away with ripping you off without you realising it is their main goal, which is what it seems like. And I, I, I hate saying that because I actually did used to love Need for Speed. Now, unfortunately, this can be applied to other games as well, such as Grand Theft Auto, and in a different way to Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo does their... My problems with them is obviously in a different area. Now, back with Need for Speed, like I said, they did try hard. Their new concepts just didn't work, and a lot of people will disagree with, with me on that, and that's completely fine. The new target audience for Need for Speed seems to be much younger and much more casual. Now, obviously, I don't mean any offense by that, it's just a simple term. But for people that want deep gameplay, as this, as this common phrase keeps getting thrown around, a high skill ceiling and a low uh, entry to you know, to play the game, for how much skill you actually need, has moved dramatically over the years. Even the original Need for Speeds had a little more complexity a bit to it, it felt a bit, not much, Not there's not much difference now, but compared to what they're, what they're releasing these days, it's, these days it's literally as watered down and as, it's just, I can't respect it anymore. <clears throat> Because as a driving simulator fan and driving games fan and just a gamer in general, I have changed recently over the years um, how I've become much more inclined to prefer simulator driving games, but I still appreciate a good arcade driving game. And that's what Need for Speed used to be for me, but these days it truly isn't. 
Now whether that is due to the company, this tired of trying new formulas or just didn't want to perfect the original one anymore and just wanted to pump out games as often as possible that look good and that appeal to the younger generation. But of course that just leaves the older generation of the fans who originally actually fell in love with the series um, looking for a new game to call home, as it were, looking for a new franchise to like and fall in love with. But of course there are many out there competing in the driving sector. We have games such as Drive Club, uh, The Crew and many others and of course we've got a set of cars from Project Cars on the deeper end of the scale. And of course we've got Dirt Rally coming out soon which I can't wait for. So as you can see the result in the changes over the years in Need for Speed from originally just offering people what they wanted which is still what they seem to be doing to this day but just a completely different audience. Now this kind of almost leads us on to the next segue of on to Grand Theft Auto. Now Grand Theft Auto as we know back in the day it had the same Need for Speed sort of vibe to it. It was a game just trying to perfect what it was doing and give gamers what they seemingly wanted. Whereas these days it's more built to be the best game it can be and then it seems that seemingly at some point it just gets derailed and chopped up and made into the worst grinding machine they can for the online system and kind of forgetting about story mode and just general modding for fun and pleasure and stuff like that. There has been so many issues with Grand Theft Auto it's almost to be expected again because one of the biggest games, it's, um, it's an industry leader as it were in both sales and the scale at which it tries to make its games. But it's not actually got that much competition though unfortunately Grand Theft Auto, on console at least in my opinion, because the closest game I can uh, compare to it for the same sort of play style, like if you want to play a game a certain way for me like for example, I tend to play Grand Theft Auto if you don't already know from my previous videos in quite a explosive manner and Just Cause 3 fits that manner superbly. But like I said before, Just Cause 3 isn't perfect and Far Cry isn't really the same and uh, I just... Grand Theft Auto has it sewn up. They have the best world, they have the most amount of content, they have the biggest fan base and it's usually successful. But Grand Theft Auto these days seems to be more aimed towards people that are comfortable with grinding I'm not. Um, this wasn't originally seemingly the plan with Grand Theft Auto, I will point this out. Uh, back in the original online days, things were quite cheap, the updates weren't ridiculously expensive and uh, it was still quite a shit money situation to actually earn money, but you didn't need to earn much in the first place, where these days you do. It's like basically they were testing the water. They were testing the water to see, can we get away with putting in shark cards, which people will seemingly think are innocent until we jack up the prices of all the content for the online stuff. Now of course at that point is when I started to shout out and go hey up, hey no 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 none of this please Rockstar and of course the community disagrees with me seemingly and so the Rockstar that they want their game to be as grand as possible and they're not even hiding the fact that they're making people grind these days to, for the content it's to be expected a lot of streamers have come to the terms with it that they know what they're doing but they're still happy to do so if that's the case for you well, congratulations you can enjoy a game that I can't no longer. Uh, I can't play Grand Theft Auto because I, I know too much about how it's put together, how it's formulated to sap money out of me and to make the shark cards be more appealing and more necessary. When in my view these sorts of monetization practices should never be placed in a game this big. I've had, I've had general people argue to me that Grand Theft Auto couldn't afford to do its annual and uh, monthly DLC updates without shark cards because they won't be able to afford it. Yeah, there are some people out there, there's two types of people that have just responded to that. You've either responded to that sentence in either, they must be stupid. Have you seen how much Grand Theft Auto made in the first week alone, let alone how much it must have made nearly two years on? And then there's the other side going, well, but they can't afford it. No, trust me. Go look at some numbers. They're fine. Rockstar are not in any trouble financially, they are completely fine after Grand Theft Auto V, they've sold it on multiple platforms to the same gamers over and over again and even got most of them, or well, quite a lot, unfortunately a lot of people seemingly to buy shark cards because they're still here. And I see Grand Theft Auto 6 still being the same unfortunately. But I will just say at the end of this before we move on to the next game, 
is just that Grand Theft Auto as a franchise I absolutely did love back in the day. I played the originals, top down versions and I fell in love ever since Grand Theft Auto 3 onwards. Even though Grand Theft Auto 4 was a bit bland, the Ballad of Big Gay Tony expansion, the, what was it, Liberty Stories or whatever the hell they called it, there were so many little expansions and mini games and mobile games for Grand Theft Auto in that time. But yeah, along with San Andreas and Vice City, they were some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. It felt like there was no limits and it was fantastic and now the limit is my time, my patience and how much money I have to put, spend on short cards and that is a crying shame. Hopefully Grand Theft Auto, Rockstar please uh, stop it, okay? I know I've been mean to you in my previous videos but Need for Speed is a franchise I love to so is Grand Theft Auto. I hate seeing what they've become and it really does hurt me. So please don't think I'm just doing this to slag it off and just to sound like I want to be the odd one out in the crowd and just... <laughs> sure, I just want to expose them for what I think they truly have become. Now, the one that I, I, I've said in many vlogs that just, which just haven't been put onto the channel mainly because of audio issues, which is what this video is for. I'm trying to get my old audio equipment working again. I'm using my same microphone, but because it's having hissy fits with my new laptop and my new hardware, uh, whether it's because of driver problems or an update from Windows 10 breaking it or something, I don't know, but my old netbook is somehow working again, so for now it can step in and fill in the shoes for audio. I made a vlog recently which hasn't been uploaded, which uh, basically just was outlining the fact that uh, comments were going to be disappearing from my future videos, uh, the comment section, because of reasons that will be later revealed. And uh, I'm done uh, talking about Gran Turismo, apart from the occasional time. There's going to be a few more times in a couple of upcoming videos where I'll mention it and then I probably won't mention it again until Gran Turismo Sport gets released and if I cover it as a review but apart from that there'll be no mention of Gran Turismo from here on in and what I pointed out was um, having to deal with the Gran Turismo community throughout the last year or two has eaten away at me and it's one of it's one of the leading factors to comments going away in future videos just because I'm done with all that type of BS and when you have mental issues and you have mental disorders it's kind of important to keep check of your mental health and that sort of thing just really generally doesn't help even though I have developed a thicker skin over the years now I do apologize for that little diversion we'll get back on to the downfall of my much loved franchises um, now this wasn't as much loved but Gran Turismo I did have a, a lot of hours playing time with that franchise. Played quite a few of their games now over the years and like I will point out in a future video it's been a double edged sword for me because most arguably my content I'm most popular and most well known for Gran Turismo stuff. But throughout my time that's just become uh, more of a pain more than a blessing. So. Let me give you a bit more background on it. If you haven't seen any of my previous Gran Turismo rants or anything like that, where I've gone full out into it, I'm not going to go into full details. But Gran Turismo is a franchise that is still loved by quite a lot of people. Um, I sort of see why they like it, but it depends what you're into driving games for. If you're into for the deeper simulation, then it's no longer the game that you should want to be in, as it were. But there's a game like as a in between from going from arcade to a simulator. I reckon it's a really good it's a really good series, but it depends what you value from a game. Because one of the biggest problems in a franchise and the formulas is that, for example, Need for Speed kept trying to improve the original formula, then they tried diverting it and going in different areas. And Grand Theft Auto kind of did the same. It stuck at doing what it did well, uh, providing the player what they originally liked but trying new things. Whereas Gran Turismo, like I've already said before, is a game that has pretty much not evolved. It's remained back in the dark ages while all the other games alongside it have progressed and evolved over the years. Where Gran Turismo is more than seemingly happy to sit on its laurels and just reuse old assets until finally, seemingly, I can only predict this, that their company will eventually stop making driving games or move into a different sector or maybe even disappear altogether. But thankfully for them they have quite a big following still. Um, I, I, I really don't understand why. It's been, I used to like it, but after Gran Turismo 6 I just couldn't have kept up with it. I, I, it's just, for me, like I said before, it's quantity over quality. So. 
you get a lot, but it's all stuff that you've had before, maybe with a little bit of shining up. And for some people, that's all they want. Now, I've actually speaking to gamers where all they actually want from a car game is this particular type of car, like maybe one exact type of car. And if it's got that, they're willing to pay full fifty pounds for a game just to have that car. But that's maybe just the minority. For most of us, it's all about the quality and how deep, how deep is the simulation, how good is it. Now, for me, like I've already said, games such as a set of course of project cars are completely different ballpark to games such as Gran Turismo, Drive Club, and that sort of malarkey. There is a massive difference, but the biggest problem in this scenario is Gran Turismo over the years has stuck to the tagline, the real driving simulator. I feel disgusted every time I say that sentence because I know it's absolute bullshit. Some people recently have tried to argue that that game has, well, was the original simulator. It, it wasn't, because technically if you're using the word simulator in that type of context, then it's simulating and doing something. Pretty much a lot of games, I'm not going to say all of them, but a lot of games are simulating something, even if it's real or, or if it's fictional. It, when you actually put simulation as the actual definition that I define it as, where it's true to life, because that's the best sentence I can come up with to keep it short and sweet. It's, simulator means true to life. Not just echoing or looking like real life, it's true to real life. And that's what a simulator is. And unfortunately, Gran Turismo, sticking by that tagline, has made it next to impossible for me to stand by them as a franchise, or as a fan, or in any sort of capacity such as that. So unfortunately, that's three franchises which I can no longer get any enjoyment out of and I can't purchase them without feeling like a waste of my time or like I'm getting the short end of the deal. I wish that this video could have been more happy, it could have been better, but the shining light for all of this is that maybe the next Need for Speed will be aimed back at the original people that used to love it. Give us wheel support, give us manual gears, give us actual deep lovely gameplay not shallow, miserable shite. For Grand Theft Auto, keep doing what you're doing, developers. You clearly are making some amazing shit. You really are. I've put a lot of hours into a lot of... We're not editing that out. I can't be honest. It's too late in the video. There's enough versions of Grand Theft Auto out there that I've had time on PS3, PS4. I've not tried PC yet because my hardware isn't good enough. But if they can just stop this online bullshit, take out... The, it's not really microtransactions because it's pretty expensive, it's not really micro. To call it micro is kind of cheeky really. But to get away with shark cards all this time is getting ridiculous. If they can remove that for GTA 6, remove the grind, make it fun again, and you'll have me back. For Gran Turismo, I've said this before, I'll say it again. It might take the drastic action of a whole new leader behind the franchise. We might have to seriously consider that Kaz might have to leave and get someone with a different direction in to really see that franchise get resurrected in my eyes. But if you really want to win me back, Kaz, which I know you don't really care, uh, it's just it seems to be Japanese culture when it comes to gaming, to just not really care and just do what you want, which is cool, I like that. But when you, your game is out of date, you're recycling the same old stuff over and over to the point where it's past its use usefulness, it's, it's out of date. I know technically content doesn't have an expiry date like food does, but in my mind it actually does. Especially when you have no interiors in, in 2015, and if their plans are to believe with GT Sport having no interiors still with some recycled content from GT6, which is recycled content from previous iterations, then that's just beyond acceptable. Well, at least they'll hopefully still give steering wheel support. A need for speed. Hmm. So Gran Turismo, if you want to get me back on board, show me some initiative. Show me that you still care. Stop recycling and just chucking in new tracks and gimmicks. And just try, okay? 2D cardboard cutouts, no real tyre models, heat models, just interiors. The quality of the actual content made with different technology has <laughs> just been so wide apart that you really need to make it consistent and maybe consider changing the formula because 
I know that the bottom line of this video is that changing the formula over the years is what's ruined some of the much loved games of our past. But sometimes if you're on the deathbed as a franchise you need to change. But maybe I'm wrong. That's just one man's opinion. Maybe the Gran Turismo fan base is way bigger than I imagined and I'm just the person about to get mobbed again but there's no more comments. So. <sighs> if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up and uh, if you don't like it then leave a thumbs down because I'm sure people will anyway but I, yeah, whatever. That's just things. I love you all as always. I'll see you in the next video. For now, goodbye.